I'd never have met her if I hadn't learned to swim. After mummy passed, I had so much time on me hands. Well, getting her up in the morning, wash, dress, breakfast, you're talking two hours. And if she wanted to go out, boy, it'd be 45 minutes just getting her into the car to go to Iceland. The supermarket, not the country. Although I did take her to Iceland once, she wanted to go ever since Joanna Lumley did a documentary about it. More of her later. It was my present for a 70th. We'd spent weeks beforehand looking for a suitable coat. She wasn't an easy woman to buy for, believe you me. She eventually plumped for this amazing thick fur coat. But of course, when we get to Reykjavik, it's unseasonably warm. So she never wore the coat once. Fuming. We fly back to Stansted and it's colder here than it was in Iceland. So mum finally puts on her new coat. But as she admires herself in the mirror at the top of the escalator down the tube, she trips and falls all the way down. Bedlam. I race down the escalator screaming, someone press the emergency stop. All these people gather around and by the time I reach her, she's got up, dusted herself off and she's like, I'm fine. It was her new coat. It was so padded, it completely protected her, like armour. Not such a waste of money after all. I could have lost her then. So the 12 years after were a real bonus. Well, that's what I told myself when she eventually went. Work signed me off for three months. Not my idea. But I said to Karen in HR, I'm up here keeping busy. But she said mental health was the top of the company's agenda these days. And hadn't I signed up for that weekend's paintballing mental health fundraiser? I said, Look, I just buried my mother and shooting gobs of paint at work colleagues in camouflage gear where it don't really appeal. Karen smiles a bit awkwardly and says, if I wanted more than the three months, she's sure she could swing it. Of course, as soon as Shazzy are on reception ears, it's all, ooh, lucky you, three months on the sofa watching Netflix. I didn't take the bait. Jason was sweet though, asked me what I was going to do with the time. Had I thought of learning a language or taking up a sport? And I said, I'd always wanted to learn to swim, but chlorine, it makes my eyes sore. Never mind what it does to me here. Shazzy is earwigging, having a casual flick for a grazia. Ever heard of goggles and a bathing cap? She really thinks she's all that. Shazia. Her boyfriend's got an auntie who does makeup on the one show, and we never hear the end of it. Anyway. It was her sarky little comment that did it. I was gonna learn how to swim. I was in the beginner's class. Grown ass woman with a bunch of six year olds. I actually took a rubber ring that first time, but got told quite sternly that it wasn't a certified flotation device. So there's me standing there waiting to go in when Joanna Lumley climbs out of the pool and we lock eyes. Well, she gives me a lovely smile, then bounces off into the ladies' changing room. Well, my first thought is, wait till I tell mummy. <laughs> we both love Joanna. And my second thought is, what must I look like? Lime green swimsuit, jaw hanging open, mummy's old floral bathing cap, goggles, and my little mermaid rubber ring. <laughs> Thank God Karen from HR didn't pass by. She'd be organising a mental health fundraiser for me. I got home and had a little Google, see if I could find out if she's local. But then I thought, this feels a bit stalkery. Sat on my laptop here, still wet, typing in, where does Joanna Lumley live? Talk about single black female. I was a big fan of the new Avengers as a teenager. That was the Joanna Lumley I fell in love with. Purdy, strong, independent, all the things I wished I was. All the things I suppose we all wish we were. She wasn't there the next night, and the one after that, I had to go and see Dr. Shah for my repeat prescription. And then on the Friday, there she was again, doing a very elegant breaststroke in the slow lane. Well, oh, I'm still splashing about with the kiddies in the shallow end, and by the time I get me out together, she's gone. 
Oh well. Then blow me down if I'm not in the canteen getting a hot chocolate. And there she is in the queue standing next to me. So I introduced myself and I start yapping away about mummy and what a fan she was and I'm going a mile a minute. Of course, it weren't Joanna Lumley. It looked nothing like her. But then again, I had my goggles on both times, plus the chlorine. Could have been Angela Merkel for all I knew. I must have been thinking about mummy that first time. Maybe about Iceland and that Joanna Lumley documentary. Oh, I don't know. They say the mind's a funny thing and Mummy was on my mind an awful lot those first few months. Well, believe it or not, her name is Joanna too, which only added to the confusion. When we were in the pub a few weeks later, she said when I'd called her Joanna, she was too busy thinking how we knew each other to wonder why I was going on about our fab and the, the adventures. But oh, she thought I meant the film's mine then, anyway. I blush even now to think about it. But that's how we met. Joe and me. Well, her husband died in 2018, so she's had it harder than me, really. But we both understand each other. We recognise each other. And she's looking for a new adventure, like me. So we're going skiing next month. Me, skiing. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got the coat for it. Anyway, I'll bounce if I fall off a ski lift in this. It's tried and tested, eh, mummy? And it's not just the skiing. I've got loads of things lined up with Joe too. You want to see my wall calendar? It's a mass of biro. I've never had so much to look forward to. And I'm off those damn pills too. Well, who needs them when there's a world out there to explore? And if on our travels, me and Joe bump into the real Joanna Lumley doing one of her travel shows, you know, hanging off a train in India, for example, pointing at people in fields. Well, won't we have a funny story to tell her? Ha <laughs> ha!